Good evening and welcome to Special Assignment. I'm your host, Ashraf Garda. Tonight we turn the spotlight onto school violence, an issue that recently has been grabbing news headlines across the country. Learners and parents at affected schools told the Special Assignment team that school authorities turn a blind eye to complaints of bullying and violence, forcing learners to protect themselves. Producer Amos Pajo set out to investigate these allegations in tonight's story called Deadly Grounds. Swift police action to deal with criminal activities in schools. Despite these efforts, schools continue to be a paradise for drug users and violent gangs. A neighbor phoned to me and said, there is blood in London Woven and uh, your boys are involved. Although the education department claimed to have been stamping out criminal elements in schools from as early as 2001, experts say very little results have been achieved. Almost one in four secondary school learners have experienced some form of violence at school. Um, of those, a third of them are, are experiencing repeat victimization. With this situation seemingly getting out of control, government believes that communities must play a pivotal role. We can put the highest uh, uh, performance in a school we put security. But if learners are bringing in behaviors that are found in a society into the school, it needs us to then stamp this thing out, all, all of us. This is 18-year-old Gerald, not his real name. He is in grade 11 at Langenhoven High School in Pretoria. When he arrived at the school earlier this year, he had hoped for a fresh start after being bullied at his former school. However, his hopes were dashed when an apparent bully assaulted him on the school grounds. This started on a Monday while I was sitting with my friends. The bully arrived, started searching one of my friends. In the process, my friend's cap fell and the bully ordered me to pick it up and I refused. He then slapped me. I then walked away because he was with his gang and I was worried that they might assault me. The following day after school, they assaulted me again, this time around as a group. The following day after school, one better half as a group. Gerald ultimately got fed up with the assaults. He came on Monday, didn't say anything. On Tuesday, didn't say anything. And then on Wednesday, he refused to go to school. And his mom called me that we should go to the school together and then to report this because somebody was bullying him, you know. And then we went to the school. He didn't attend to the matter right. I can say the teacher said, I don't believe you. And then, well, we left him at school. After realizing that the gang is likely to strike again, Gerald arranged with his cousins and friends from a different school to escort him home after school. This decision turned out to be a bad one. I was writing English paper 3 during the last period on that day, so I was caught up. I stayed in class even after school and my friends were already waiting outside. I think the group thought my friends were there to attack them, but the truth is that they were there to escort me home. It was a group of learners. A minibus taxi drove towards them. They then put their bags in the taxi and took weapons and bricks and confronted my friends. 
My friends had to defend themselves because they did nothing wrong. The gang went on a rampage and fought with Gerald, his cousins and friends. Amongst them was this 16-year-old Lena who we will call Solomon. As we were waiting for him, a gang carrying weapons approached us and a scuffle ensued. I fought with one guy who is on the newspaper one-on-one -on -one, and he hit me with a brick on the head three times. As I was trying to fight back, all the learners attacked me. They were hitting me with bricks. One of the learners was carrying a long stick. I fought with him and he took a bite on my back. Others were pelting me with bricks and my back is still sore. A neighbor phoned me and said, there is blood in Langewoven and uh, your boys are involved. So I phoned the mother to go to school and look what's happening. According to media reports, one of the learners who was involved in the scuffle had his ear heckled off during the bloody fight. Solomon spent two days in hospital after he suffered stabbing wounds. I sustained a serious injury at the back. I'm not sure if they stabbed me with a knife or an axe. I feel a terrible pain when I bend. Special assignment made an attempt to source comment from the school authorities about what really happened. The school remained tight-lipped. Criminal charges were laid against those who were involved in the fight. The, the incident at Langenhoven School is currently um, a court case. There's been a case registered of assault. The pupil appeared before court and the case has been, has been postponed. Gerald had to stay home for a few days after the fight. His family feared for his safety amid rumors that the alleged gang was driving around the area in a minibus taxi and wanted to carry out revenge. The police should learn to conduct their investigations in the best way the victim or the complainant can express himself. And then they shouldn't force something that is not there because the policeman was forcing that these boys were gangs. They were not gangs. They were neighbors and friends. We were shown this conversation between two learners who were involved in the fight. Peppered with profanities, the exchange soon turned to violent threats. One learner from Langehoven apparently threatened to shoot Gerald's friend with his gun. As he prepares to go to school for the first time since the bloody fight, Gerald has to confront his fears of possible disciplinary action. He is also scared that he will have to face his former attackers on his own. Solomon says the alleged school gang is extremely dangerous. In the first term of this year, we saw them fighting with another group called Flying Squad. And they were also involved in another clash with a group from Sunnyside and Acadia called BNS. It was a huge gang fight, so I thought if such a dangerous gang attacks my cousin, then they will kill him. So just how widespread is violence in our schools? We try to find answers in a moment. In recent weeks, there have been more and more media reports of school violence across the country. Amongst those is a Sasolbeck incident where a learner shot a teacher who was trying to disarm him. In Johannesburg South, this Glen Vista secondary school learner was captured while assaulting a teacher. A learner was shot dead at this Fosloras High School in what is alleged to be a bullying-related incident. The criminality in school grounds has prompted the police to intensify their campaign to ensure safety in schools. Recently, the police have been raiding schools in the province. The police stings at some schools led to several disturbing discoveries. Learners were found in possession of substantial sums of dacha as well as syringes. The police believe learners used this to inject themselves with drugs, including the highly addictive and affordable nyaope. 
we had various complaints that um, drugs are being um, carried and drugs are being sold um, in and around schools and then there are also peddlers at schools so that was one of the interventions that we um, that we discussed and we engage on and we had the permission of the Department of Education the program of doing searches at school is an ongoing process although the raids at schools are supposed to be unannounced some of the learners apparently throw away their illegal possessions through the windows the minute they spot the police on the school grounds. Police leave no stone unturned to uncover crime-related evidence. During the raid, some learners were given punitive sanctions for not complying with the school's code of conduct. But why do learners resolve to using violence and intimidation against fellow learners? They say they are going to rule the school and that they are respected and no one can touch them. They keep bothering other learners. The bullies search them because they are the bosses of the school and no one can touch them. The Center for Justice and Crime Prevention has conducted a study in more than a hundred schools throughout the country. The study has revealed bullying remain a major concern in most schools. Almost one in four secondary school learners have experienced some form of violence at school. Um, of those, a third of them are, are experiencing repeat victimization. Um, so it isn't a once-off act, but it's something that, that they're experiencing three or more times. Um, and that obviously has lots of implications in terms of their concentration at school, their attachment to school, educational outcomes, as well as um, you know, how they live their lives generally in the home and in communities and how they continue to develop into adulthood. The research pointed to shortcomings by school governing bodies in addressing the problem of bullying at schools. Mostly, Most of the cases are not reported to the principal. Why? I don't know, maybe victims fear that they will be victimized again. We need to look at what the short-term interventions are in the classroom. And for me, I think that would be making sure that classrooms are effectively managed, making sure that learners um, have the space to report cases where they feel scared or when somebody is bullying them or somebody is posing a threat to them that they they can report that to teachers or to principals and know that action is going to be taken. Despite the recent spate of violent attacks at schools across the country, the Department of Basic Education says it has been addressing the issue for more than a decade. We have been addressing it uh, for some time now, uh, since early 2001. Um, in, in 2006, the South African Human Rights Commission also had um, had done a study on school violence and out of that we've developed specific programs uh, to address the levels of violence. The important thing to understand is that um, violence is not just located in one specific area and it's not doesn't just have one specific factor that leads to violence. It is uh, many times it's contextually based and it is about how we actually deal with that with, with those issues at the level of that context. The department says it has developed several programs including policy framework and advocacy campaigns. But the national department says the effective implementation of these initiatives is the responsibility of the provincial departments. In Gauteng, the education department says despite the recent cases of violence, it has got a strategy in place to ensure safety in schools. It includes giving powers to the school governing bodies to enforce codes of conduct as well as psychosocial support for learners. We need to provide uh, counselling, we need to provide uh, uh, remedial work to some of the learners that are, are, are manifesting uh, behavioural problems in a school. So through a school-based support team, SPST, we then identify these learners where we bring in um, uh, um, uh, NGOs who have dealt with these issues to then be able to assist these learners. One of the initiatives is to take troublesome learners through prison to visit inmates. With the partnership with the Department of Correctional Service, we do what we call uh, prison visits, so that we take these learners to prison so that they know how is prison life. They are able to interact with the inmates. They know whatever action that they are, they are doing, they will end up in prison and it's not nice to be in prison. Meanwhile, the department says learners who are behind the violence in Langenhoven are suspended and that their future will be decided by the school governing body. The department and the, and the, and the SGP did an investigation. The two learners were suspended, they were charged. 
They will be appearing before the disciplinary committee of the SGP and will then take it from there as a department in relation to what the disciplinary committee of the, of the SGP recommend. The department says it will investigate claims made by Gerald that a teacher at Langenhoven School ignored his plights about being bullied and threatened that action will be taken. Let's wait for the disciplinary com processes to finish. Then we're going to look at the evidence that was presented at the disciplinary hearing. We'll take it from there. But as the department, as we say, if there is anybody who's an employment or who's an employee of the department whom bullying is reported to and there is no action from that particular person, the department has to, is, is, is going to take action around that because we can't tolerate bullying in our schools. Well, does the National Education Department have a grip on school violence and can it ensure a safe learning environment? That comes up next. Despite the ongoing efforts by the Education Department to address safety concerns at schools, the problem seems to persist. The study by the Center for Justice and Crime Prevention shows that although bullying has not increased, it remained a prevalent problem. What we see is that physical bullying, the sort of bullying that I think people most commonly think of as, as um, either teasing or uh, schoolyard bullying, um, is still the most common. But we are seeing an increase in cases of cyberbullying. Um, it's still not as, com as, as common as, as other forms of bullying, but cyberbullying certainly is becoming a bit of you know, a major problem as well. Experts say violence at schools occur across the socio-economic spectrum. There are some preconceptions that they happen within particular schools, problem schools, um, or schools in, in um, low socioeconomic areas. But what we're seeing is that the violence happens everywhere. It's happening in schools across the spectrum, it's happening in urban areas, in rural areas, in low income, high income areas. Um, it really, there's, there, there's no difference really be between um, you know, where this violence is, is happening. It's, it's across the spectrum. We have the broad uh, elements uh, to, be, to, a, to be able to address violence. I think the challenge for us is in terms of the implementation at the local level, because violence is, is, is a societal issue. It's not just something that's in the school. It's about how we mobilize communities as well through the community policing forums to begin to support schools. The South African National Association of School Governing Bodies is tasked with ensuring proper management of schools. It says it is concerned about the violent behavior in schools. If teachers do not have control over these children, then we have got a problem. We don't have any more education because we send these children to school to be taught by these very teachers. They need respect, they need to be protected, and they must be protected firstly by the very same children and by us as parents. At the same time, the association says its powers are limited. The school government do not have the right to dismiss the child, but they will just recommend that due to these outcomes, then we feel that now this child must not attend school in the school. So, and then it's upon the HOD whether uh, the HOD accept uh, the recommendation that is made by the school governing bodies. Then the school, the HOD must then look for another school for the child. Some of the issues that, that we're dealing with are taboo. Uh, it's the first time we meet some of them. Like, for example, the issue of learners beating up teachers. It's an issue that has never been reported to the department before. We're dealing with it for the first time. But some of the issues around uh, uh, learners taking drugs, um, learners coming to school intoxicated, it, it, it's, it's some of the events, some of the things that we had seen before, we have dealt with. Amid the spate of recent violent attacks on school grounds, have teachers and school governing bodies lost control of the schools? In most instances, these cases don't, don't come out of nowhere. Often they're early warning signs. Um, and too often, I think the school only intervenes when it's too late, when these problems escalate into serious acts, or, you know, when we have um, people being attacked with weapons or we have cases that result in hospitalization. 
The Education Department believes communities should get more involved in ensuring safer schools. As you know that schools are a macrocosm of what is happening in the society. We, we, we cannot as a department, we can put the highest fence in a school, we put security. But if learners are bringing in behaviors that are found in a society into the school, it needs us to then stamp this thing out, all, all of us. The department also believes that communities have a responsibility to take action against learners who roam around the streets during school time. You see a learner sitting in a tavern with school uniform, drinking, or you see a learner carrying or smoking uh, uh, drugs in a parking lot. As a parent and as a, as, a, as a South African, you say nothing after that. What we are calling is for everybody. We are not going to win this war alone. Now, do share your views on tonight's show, and you can do so by tweeting us using the special assignment hashtag or Facebook us at the official special assignment page. And you can also email us at truth at sabc.coza. Finally, I've picked out two comments from last week's show on criminal cargo making its way to African ports. Responses, Clive Clifton tweeted, Port officials and SARS employees must be involved in these crimes in order for it to reach such proportions. And Byron Chuck emailed, it's a shame that criminal syndicates put hundreds of thousands of lives in Africa at risk by shipping of counterfeit medicine to the continent. Perpetrators should be charged with attempted murder. Well, that's it for tonight. Join us again next week when we point out the issues that matter. Mm -hmm.